first sat down and we were having a conversation and I explained I have a, an allergy card. For years I've had an allergy card. It is a laminated allergy card that details everything that I am allergic to. Something that you made yourself? Yes. Okay. Yes. I made it because I was sick of being embarrassed by having to describe every time I go into a restaurant and hope that the server understood what I said, understood the severity of what I said, and then translated it properly when they went back in the kitchen, if they translated it at all. Right. And there's times when I still will hand that allergy card over, and the server will look at it and go, okay, and hand it back. And I'm like, no, 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 That needs to go to the kitchen yeah. in order for me to trust that I am not going to end up on the floor here. Yeah. Because again, it's different to have an anaphylactic, or in my case, anaphylactoid, which is you know a very small difference, um, allergic reaction, and you know just having a little intolerance, yeah. which by the way, we account for all severities. And within the app, you can set your severity, mild, severe, or anaphylactic. Yeah. Our parameters will return results based on those severities. So there's, there's something for everybody within that. But when I, told Jeff about my allergy card, and he said, let me see it, <laughs> showed it to him, and he went, perfect, you know, this is what we're going to do, this is our plug-in for restaurants, Sure. and, and hence became the Nutrisloop Safety Dining Program, because, you know, I am not unique, there's a lot of me's out there that, you know, would like the same thing, so it was perfect, it was like, he gets it, you know, he understands that, that this is a problem, well, and have solutions. But it also it also lends itself. I mean, uh, you know, I've I've interviewed, I've spent, I've done untethered sessions now for maybe ninety uh, mobile entrepreneurs from around the world, and and the biggest challenge that everyone has is that all this effort that goes into building an application uh, does not translate into an application that costs five dollars, right? The effort that you're putting into this, five bucks at a time, is not a it does not a business make, right? Uh, it, it's the biggest challenge of of you know app developers. Even if you do multiple platforms and you sell a million copies, you know, it's still a small business, right? So how do you scale? And you have to look at auxiliary services around that product. I mean, is a perfect example. A game doesn't have one for the most part. This, obviously, great thinking is that, you know, how do you, how do you leverage the research that went into this product and make it into a real world application outside of, outside of the iPhone and, and mobile devices? So... Is that, uh, Jeff, you know, that's obviously part of the roadmap. That's part of the roadmap. I think the second thing that we uncover is uh, Valerie and Paula have digitally mapped every, every food allergy, every kind of chronic disease, every lifestyle, wow. health choice um, to, a UPC code, to a UPC code and essentially to a food ingredient. So, uh, was, so that and, was that done manually? What's that? Was that done manually? Like, has that been the effort over the last year? Is just that is um, Valerie is the medical side of this. Yeah, and we realize that it's one thing to take into consideration the manufacturer's warnings, but unfortunately, there is no standardization and food labeling at the moment. So we needed to manually go in there and start looking at ingredients. And um, one of the things we did is. Uh, one of the reasons actually that we've held off our launch a little bit is we've partnered with a company called R Biopharma, mm -hmm. which is the company that credentials manufacturers products for allergen free um, labels. Okay. And so they have gone through our credentials and looked at our filters and have um, basically endorsed us by saying, this is really exhaustive. <laughs> and now we've started to add things like European terms. I mean, American grocery stores carry European products. Yogurt is spelled a lot of different ways. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, we had to go through and uh, manually figure out and test these filters to see you know, how, how products were going to return. Additionally, products are really weird sometimes. I mean, there's ingredients that uh, you have no idea that it's, you know, this product might have a conflict, but we have like 20, I think right now, 20 something different um, profiles, different uh, criteria. The, the core of the product from a technology standpoint is called a UPC nutrition criteria compliance data set. <laughs> okay. 
I call them the uh, UPC NCC filter parameters. Yeah. It basically takes nutrition criteria for all different conditions, be they lifestyle, um, kosher, or MSG free. You know, people want to avoid MSG, they want to avoid high fructose corn syrup or eat vegetarian. Uh, chronic conditions like pancreatitis, uh, cardiac conditions, diabetes, and all of the top eight food allergies. Yeah. Uh, people with a peanut allergy don't realize that lupine is very similar in a legume at the compound level to peanut. Mm. So we separate that and we give that to them separately so that they can say, okay, this is not about an ingredient. This is about how a compound reacts to an individual's body chemistry. That's what allergies are. You know, it's not about, um, you know, peanuts are bad. Yeah. Peanuts are bad for me, but they're not bad for you. So it's all about you know an individual's customization. And again, we have to look at how are we going to leverage that. Um, so taking it beyond the iPhone um, e-commerce, you know, you could apply these same filter sets to e-commerce for supermarkets as, as e-commerce gets bigger and bigger. Um, integrating with loyalty card systems. Um, so if, if somebody doesn't have an iPhone. Um, they could upload their, their nutrition profile to the loyalty system as they're scanning at the uh, register. They can just get an alert saying, don't have this product. Um, so the idea was to essentially move beyond the, the mobile iPhone app um, and make it the platform for consum consumers to manage their health profiles, whether they're eating in, they're eating out, um, whether they have an iPhone, whether they have an Android, or whether they have a feature phone. Yep. Uh, and obviously maximize the work that Paul and Valerie have done. I want to show you, it's really hard. We'd rather everybody go to our website, NutraSleuth.com, look on the video page, and we have some you know, fun videos that really demo like every single feature of the app. Yep. What was interesting to me is, you know, again, this has been such a learning process. So I was going through and I was testing the app. And I have added in here different profiles of people that would have shellfish, shellfish allergy, peanut allergy, diabetes, etc. So I'm looking for things that you know, return incorrect results. I look up Wegmans, which is a supermarket chain, private label um, ketchup. And I don't know if you can yep. see there. Yep. Okay, so the product has no conflicts. And that makes sense to me. It's just ketchup. I don't have anything, you know chosen in here that would be crazy and uh, you know here's the ingredients yep right okay so then I go to the next ketchup which is Walden Farms and Walden Farms is a specialty food company so I'm making our allergy friendly etc and I return for a couple of my sample profiles um, at both a lifestyle and an allergy conflict I'm like this can't be correct I mean so I look. Ketchup's ketchup. Right. Hmm. And Jane has a seafood conflict with ketchup. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, there must be a mistake here. Yeah. So I check in with Valerie and I said, what is it here? What am I missing? And if you look in the ingredients, can you see the actual ingredients there? Yep. yep. So what is it that has a seafood conflict? Now, if you have a seafood allergy, you're going to see that label. You could be holding that product in your hand, right? Yeah. And you're like, okay, I have a seafood allergy. That looks fine to me. Yeah. Alginate. Alginate? Something oh, yeah. Glycol alginate. alginate. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that has a seafood conflict. Algae, alginate, seafood. Oh, my God. Even if you read the labels, you still have to understand them. You have no There's idea and more complicated each day. They're getting updated every day. Um, so essentially, this is the most up-to-date way to read food labels. I, uh, it, it took a dietitian to tell me, you know? <laughs> it just seems like this is, uh, I, I mean, so from, from a mobile perspective, from an application perspective, th this really does, uh, this simplifies everything from a dietitian's perspective. I mean, if, if I have a, a sensitivity or if, you know, there's an example, if, if it's a high protein diet or if I don't want MSG, you know, my wife su suffers from migraines, so MSG is, is a, is a no-go, is no right? So, um, 
and, and you know certainly uh, sensitivity to caffeine and a lot of these things that are that are in there obviously uh, sugar and, and a bunch everything that's good I think uh, is, is bad um, but this allows you to really just without a brain like it's what GPS did for 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 uh, for getting from A to B I don't have to think about directions anymore that's out of my head this does that doesn't it it, it just makes it so simple to figure out what should go into my body uh, and what shouldn't and I mean, GPS being a good example, you don't have to follow the GPS and what it says. It will it will work around you. Yep. But it's a tool that yep. empowers you, so that if you're not thinking about it, you can reference it or not. Yeah, it just that. But it really comes back to just having a dietitian right by your side and has Valerie's all her knowledge and all her education right there by your side in your hands. And we also have other um, uh, people on our board of advisors. Carol Ayrton Jones uh, is one of them. Yeah. She is, in our opinion, one of the most noted dietitians in the world. Uh, there is a an equation that's actually um, the equation. I'm not a dietitian, so <laughs> this is not going to be explained perfectly. But it's the equation that you use as a dietitian to figure out how many calories a body needs in order to function at a normal level. Okay. That equation, you know, someone is this age, at this height, um, you know, this body weight, they need this many calories. That equation is named for her. Okay. So what's, what was really great is um, Valerie was telling us that she studied that equation in school. Yeah. And, oh, that's pretty cool. And here's Dr. Dr. Ireton Jones on our team. Yeah. I mean, and she is a dietitian, but she is also a PhD, yeah. and she is an author, and she is so noted, and she loves the product because she saw also where this automation is like, okay, this is great. This is great for the industry, the professional industry as well, and we have a professional product planned yeah. so that dietitians and medical professionals can use this product to keep track of their um, patients' uh, information and profiles, so, and they can adjust it accordingly. So that's an interesting concept. So that if um, if I'm a patient of, of a doctor or a nutritionist, 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 uh, and I can I'll download this. I'll be able to download this to my iPhone or whatever device I have, and then um, I can be given um, or I can be monitored that way. Is that an idea that you guys are doing? So that it. If if this person's my my doctor, uh, and when I go and buy all this food, um, I can that information gets stored somewhere, and will that be sent to my doctor? Is that a, is that something that you guys are moving into? Big brother, <laughs> I'm not sure. Voluntarily, that, right? I mean, it's not. People want to go for that. I think the the focus is more that uh, there's certain parameters. So, say you uh, that a patient has diabetes. Yep. And so the generally accepted parameters would be that a serving of a product would have X amount of carbohydrates, X amount of proteins. Um, those parameters, those numbers are set. Yeah. On the professional version of the app, those numbers will be able to be customized. So if I am following these guidelines and I go in to my, um, my professional, my medical professional, and I say, okay, I'm still not feeling well, and they say, you know what? Let's decrease your carbs allowance. Let's increase your protein, and the app will adjust. Yeah. And now we'll give you advice on your products based on those customized parameters. So it's about enabling the medical professional at the point of care to be able to save that profile on their own device and then to send that profile to the patient's phone, hmm. export it, and say, okay, you know, and, and maybe even they did some some manual searching because you, you don't have to scan a product. You yeah. can just look for a product. So maybe they say, okay, you know what? You know, these cookies are okay for you to eat. I'm going to save them to your favorites. I'm going to send it to you. Buy these cookies. Yeah. So you, know, you have kind of a, a, a loud list in your... It's also for like cafeterias. You know?